Hi, I'm here with Dr Jennifer Mansfield, a newly um, a qualified PhD from last year. So Jen is uh, got a PhD in science education and you're currently a lecturer here in science ed at Monash with particularly the secondary, but you go across. Is that yes, right? Yes, I also yes. teach in primary science as well. Yeah. yeah, and biology is your particular passion. Biology is, yes. Started yeah. out as a, as a scientist and very passionate about science education, in particular biology education. Great. Mm. So Jen, maybe you could tell us a little bit about your science ed research um, so that we can get a sense of what field you work in. So my uh, PhD research was very much about uh, the moments that cause us disruption in our, in our teaching and that cause us to learn more about our practice and about our students and things like that. So in particular I was very interested in how science teachers deal with little disruptions in their practice and, and what sort of learning can be born from those experiences. So Jen, can you give us an example of what you might mean by disruption? So, for example, when teaching in biology, uh, mm -hmm. a, a particular biological concept and it doesn't quite go the way you hoped or planned it would, you might leave the class thinking, oh gee, I didn't, didn't quite nail that, what can I do differently perhaps next time? And so thinking about that, maybe talking to other people and then going back in and revisiting that concept again perhaps. Um, and the learning that can come from that, we don't always focus on the learning yeah. from those mm. situations. So that's particularly where I'm interested. Interesting. Yeah, great. So Jen, you're just starting out in your academic career. You've been a teacher in, in school. Um, you've been to an ACIRA, mm -hmm. uh, I think the one in Melbourne. Yes, yes I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so you haven't even had the benefit of travelling interstate for ACIRA yet. So from a perspective of starting out, can you tell us what did you get from going that one time and maybe what you hope to get from it moving forward? Um, well, I very much feel that teaching is a is a is a is a relationship built is a very social endeavor and so I'm finding as an ECR I'm reading all of this work by mm -hmm. all of these people in the field and I, I quite admire their work and I learn a lot from it but I don't necessarily have a relationship with them and right. I and it, yeah. I sort of feel like I'm having a one-way conversation <laughs> so I'm, I'm I'm reading everything yeah. but I'm not actually able to to talk in real time and so um, I felt that at ECR I was able to meet and put faces to names so these people came to life, they weren't just in paper, they were in real life. And so the next step for me moving forward is to actually have a two-way conversation and start to get to know um, a lot of the people in this community because coming into this community, this is my research community. Mm -hmm. and, and particularly in Australia, I feel a sense of, of comfort and I want to belong to this space. Um, to help build my career and, and to, to launch overseas. So I, I, I feel an affinity with right. the Australian community and, and want to um, uh, establish some relationships there. So, so then if you're going to, if that's what you're looking for, how, how might you go about doing that at ACIRA? What, you know, or how can ACIRA support you in realising that? Uh, I think the, the, the opportunities for early career researchers like the fireside chat that's this year that yeah. I'm looking forward to um, and I've heard of other colleagues talk about the HDR workshops beforehand mm -hmm. I think they're really beneficial to get to know not only other early career researchers or HDRs which I didn't have the benefit of going to in hindsight I wish I had yeah. uh, but also to get to know some of the people who run those so instead of going to someone's talk and maybe having um, questions at the end which can potentially be a little bit intimidating um, to actually in those early career researcher models to have that time in small groups with the more experienced researchers is something that I'm particularly looking forward to. So you're about to present, I mean you're going to a CIRA this, time, uh, this year in Sydney so you're about to present for your first time. Mm -hmm. I know you've presented overseas at different conferences so a slightly different format of a CIRA, 20 minutes a presentation, 20 minutes talk. Mm -hmm. Um, so how do you prepare for something like that? Um, I'm going in with specific questions that I would like to pose to the audience mm -hmm. to ask about my research and in particular in developing this research for a publication which again is something not that I'm not that particularly experienced with yeah. and so to ask, I see this community as a supportive community mm -hmm. A lot of these people have been here and done that and so to get their feedback and support is something that I'm looking forward to. So I'm seeing that format as a discussion rather than a, a presentation by me saying here's what I've got. It's a inviting that, that kind of um, collaboration yeah. and communication on my work which I'm really looking forward Great. to. 
So let's let's forward track a little bit. So you know you've been in academia for five, ten years now. Um, so what do you think you'd be looking for from a CIRA at, at that point in your career, or what what role do you think a CIRA would be playing for you? Um, I, at that stage in my career, and I'm hoping in the next few years to look at collaborations between colleagues to extend my research in different um, forums, not just here in Melbourne. So I'd be looking at at developing those relationships as well. Great. Yeah. So Jen, I hope there's many years ahead of you in terms of engaging with ACERA and I can just say thank you very much for your time today. Pleasure. And all the best for your research career moving forward. Thanks Deb.